Today, he is here with us to share what he calls the world champion mindset, how to win big in your career, business, and life. And with that, please put your hands together, everyone, to help me welcome the 2017 world champion of public speaking, Hermanoj Vasudevan. All right. Hey, thanks, Guru, for that fabulous introduction and really like what you said and also like your suit, the same color. And um, <laughs> so uh, today, what I thought, I'm going to sell you something and I'm not going to sell you a product or a service. I'm going to sell you an idea and you will also get some free resources. You'll also get some homework to do. But the best part of this homework is that it's not going to be evaluated. I will leave it up to you whether or not you want to implement this. So the uh, with as we go ahead, I will just share with you some ideas and um, I highly recommend that you take notes because uh, you might not know what ideas you get as you listen to me and think through these ideas as well. Uh, so do you know this person? Anybody? I'm, I'm trying to, okay, yes. let me also open the chat. Yeah. Let me just open the chat and before I share, so if you know, you can either comment or um, shout out. Okay. All right. Okay. That's great. So uh, I'm just taking you through a journey, right? In terms of some pictures, right? Now, of course, you know, do you know the other guy, um, the tall guy? I mean, you may not be a fan of football, but I think he is quite um, uh, popular, right? Um, so, so and eventually when France won the World Cup, you, you, this guy became more famous and more prominent. You know, if you watch the uh, the World Cup football, yeah. So if you look at Kylian's, he had a role model, and these photos shows that what desire, visualization, determined action uh, can help you to replicate the success of others. So you can actually replicate that success. Do you know these two guys? You might know the guy on the left. If you want to unmute yourself, that's free field to say it, or you can come and whatever is faster for you. Do you know who is the guy on the left? Okay. Uh, it's Phelps, yeah? Michael Phelps. Do you know the guy on the right? Many people may, may, may not, may or may not know him. Uh, yeah, he's... Um, so Phelps has uh, many... Um, gold medals, famous as a very world famous Olympian. The guy on the right met him when he was a child, right? The, okay. And in 2016, I believe, was it? Oh, yeah. He won the gold medal in swimming. His name is Joseph Schooling. He beat Michael Phelps. Okay. Uh, so you might not know him because he's not as famous as uh, Michael Phelps. Okay. But the point is, he took a role model replicated their steps and also you know, achieve the same results. You probably do not know this guy, but when he was a small guy, he said, one day I will be number one. And there's a video of him saying that on YouTube. Now, a few years later, I mean, not many years later, in fact, he is, uh, this guy is Djokovic, Djokovic who is, uh, has been in the world number one in tennis for a record 311 weeks. Nobody else has done that before. So you see some of the other names there, Roger Federer, Pete Sampras, Lentil, Connors, and Rafael Nadal. Yeah. So the point here is, what is that? What is their secret? So, it, so these are the top three in the men the tennis um, league. So someone asked him recently when he scored this uh, world record of being number one for the longest time, he was asked, what do you think about it? He said, that's exactly what I dreamt about. This achievement to be with the tennis great, something I dreamt about when I was a kid uh, starting to pay, play tennis. So my question is, what is their secret? What is that they have that you and I can learn? and implement in our lives and achieve same or similar or better results. I'm not saying you should 
um, uh, being number one is the only way to be better, right? So how, what can you learn that you can implement that helps you get be better? Something to think about. Here is actually a photo of me. And if you see this banner on the side, you can see it's from 2011. I'm trying to control a crowd. Uh, not many people, but you can also see I'm also looking at notes as I'm reading out. Uh, no, I'm, I'm as MC of that event, host of that event. Of course, over time, uh, 2050, I'm like speaking a profit. It's a picture of me speaking at a professional conference, uh, international conferences, bigger audiences, massive audiences. And also these all happened before I became the world champion of public speaking. I'm not giving you trying to give an impression that you have to be a world champion to achieve any of these results or even better. Okay. Again, the and of course, my people paid more attention to what I am doing when I became the world champion of public speaking in 2017. Then, of course, many people came to me and said, oh, what's your secret of success? Right. What uh, what is uh, what do you do? What 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 did you figure out that we can learn from? That's when I wrote a book on this topic. And the reason I could write a book was because as I was learning the art of public speaking and speaking and becoming a better speaker, I was also taking a lot of notes of what I'm learning. So eventually what I did is when I put together a book, I called it Invaluable Insights from Losing, Winning and Coaching because I was also losing, I was also winning, I was also coach helping others. So how to become the world champion of public speaking was the title of the book. In that, I shared a model. Okay, model was the five things you should do to become the world champion of public speaking. And the picture looked like this. And on the middle was, is this picture called the mindset, is a wheel that moves. The way I envisaged, I saw that wheel was, this is the most foundational aspect that you have to master before you can get better in anything you do. And of course, uh, along the sides are the other, other uh, four components. But then minds, a lot of people, look at the mindset, but they don't pay close attention to the mindset part. You probably heard about how to craft a speech, how to deliver a speech, how to add humor, how to engage the audience, how to please the judges or, and things like that. But what I am trying to highlight for you is to focus on the mindset. And this is not just about public speaking. This works in every aspect of your life, in your career, in your business and uh, in your personal life and your professional life, right? So to give an example, I've also tried to implement this world champion mindset in my own life, in not just in public speaking, I will also share with you in a bit. So let's look at what this, what, what do I actually mean by world champion mindset? This is actually a word I coined when I was writing the book to explain it's slightly different from the way we see mindset usually. So I call it a world champion mindset, the, rather it's my definition where I say world champion mindset denotes an attitude to do the best you can to be the best in your field and believing with certainty that you will one day be counted among the best in the world, the place you feel you truly belong. Let, let's break it down, okay? So an attitude to the best you can is definitely within your control to do the best you can, right? Um, so the, to do the best you can is one and also then a desire to be the best in your field. And I'll tell you the difference between the, the desire to get better and benchmarking yourself with the best, uh, what differences you can see there. And also to believing with certainty that you will one day be counted among the best in the world. And I'll share with you how you can develop that certainty around that vision. And also a place you feel you truly, truly belong. You kind of develop that intense desire to get better in that. I'll give you an example. Of course, you know me as a better, as a speaker, as a world champion of public speaking, as a professional speaker, as an author. But let me share with you something else we probably may, may or may not know is, um, I'll come to that in a bit. So one line is, I, I, I kind of tell people is, if you are not willing to learn, no one can help you. And if you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. Right. If you are willing to learn, no one can help you. And if you're, if you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. And if you're determined to learn, no one can stop you. That, that's a core thing I like to highlight to you. Yeah. So I always get invited to speak on leadership, even now. Right. I mean, even after being the world champion of public speaking, the, the, when there is an opportunity to speak on leadership, I typically get the invite even within this organization and also in other organizations. I also written books on leadership, as you probably know, the Mastering Leadership, the Mousetrap Way. 
I also get to speak internationally on that topic of various aspects of leadership, high performance teams and uh, uh, getting to the next level in the career, business and life. And not only that, this guy, Marshall Goldsmith, the number one leadership thinker in the world. He looked at what I have done in the book uh, with the mousetrap way. And he said, the mousetrap way will teach you what is to be a great leader and how to get there. And so what I was trying to replicate is, okay, I, I, I was climbing the ladder of public speaking and asking myself, can I climb the ladder of leadership or entrepreneurship or any other topic I choose to? And the answer is, if you follow certain strategies that you're going to learn now, it is very much possible for you to be that and even better. So I will, I will invite you to think about something you want to get better. It could be in public speaking. It could be in leadership. It could be. So can you just think about some areas you like to get better at? Maybe if you can come in in the chat, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to um, know your thoughts in the process. It need not be in public speaking. What is one area of your life or one, one proficiency or competency you want to improve upon? Okay, overcoming fear. Okay, that can be fixed. Be a better father. Fantastic. To be a good social worker. That's great. Better to get better in time management. Fantastic. We all have 24 hours a day, so we have to manage. Uh, spread love, commitment to goals. That's fantastic. What else? What is one area of your life you like to improve? Confidence building. Okay, what else? You, I, I just want you to think through this, right? There should be one, some areas of your life you have to improve. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a bit, why that becomes essential. To inspire others in spreading positivity, to become a social response. Okay, to be myself. That's also a fantastic goal, yeah? To believe in myself. Someone sent me a private message there. So, yeah, uh, so you, you can share in the chat box. Don't be afraid to say, share your goals, yeah? So, so what's the secret? So that's what I like to share with you. The, the world champion mindset, how to win big in career, business, and life. I'm going to quickly share with you a lot of content. I would like you to take this opportunity to reflect on this, uh, share whatever you have, uh, you, um, and then also make plans to implement some of these ideas. You may not like everything I share, but what I share is what I have seen working for me and people I coach around the world. Right? So I'm pretty convinced that it will work. But if you have any any uh, challenges, please do let me know. Or we can uh, look at another session to look go through this as well. Yeah. So number one is to upgrade your belief system. You have to upgrade your belief system. The way you think, feel, do is all all controlled by a belief system. So if I another word I typically use is watch your BS. BS just means belief system. Okay. Uh, it's not what you think. It's belief system. Yeah. Uh, so the so as you are growing up right or as a child you probably have, have been told what to think what not to think what to eat what not to eat what to do what not to do what to read what not to read and also whenever you deviated from certain uh, commandments or certain um, um, certain orders you might have been corrected so some people overcorrect themselves some people um, kind of um, get influenced by that. So the question is not to blame your parents or blame your teachers or blame society is that everybody is conditioned one way or the other, whether you are a, a man or a girl, boy or a girl is, is the same, right? We are, we are influenced by what we hear, what we are told, the people around us and their thinking. And if you are a child, you probably seen your parents doing this or teachers doing this. If you are a parent, you've probably done this to your children, right? So, so, so while this is done with good intention, this also forms part of your belief system. You start thinking about what can you think, what can you do, what can you read, what can you uh, aspire for? So when I say watch your BS, it's understand how you're being wired. Why do you do certain things in certain ways? Right. So there is a certain mechanism that's an operation in your mind that makes you behave in a certain way while some people um, do, do it differently. So there is a famous quote I like from Les Brown, uh, internationally renowned um, um, professional speaker. He has a line. He says, don't let someone else's opinion of you become your reality. Just because someone said something about you and you are like this, 
you have to detach those labels from yourself. That's one way you get better in what you do, right? Don't get, let other people control you. And also you definitely are influenced by the books you read. If you only read one book in a life, that's, that, that's what you think is right. But if you read more, you think more, you reflect more, interact more, you see there are so many other perspectives towards on, on life and you can also learn, um, learn faster and also grow faster. Right. Also, the conversations, who, who are you talking to? Whose opinion are you listening to? Think about that and see how you are conditioned. How, where did you pick up certain beliefs? So the, 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 identifying, identifying that would be would help you to remove those limiting beliefs as well. I only I showed you this picture about a father or coach uh, teaching the child. And the guy is starting to believe that he can one day be number one. And eventually he becoming the number one. Okay, so the idea is, is also some people are fortunate to have the right mentors earlier, but that doesn't mean if you do not have a mentor yet, doesn't mean that your life is uh, gone. You can always find people who can help you to get better in your life, right? So one is upgrade your operating system. So the same concept, but in a slightly different aspect is that your software runs your hardware. Your software is the programming of your mind. Now let me give and give you ask you a question, right? If if I were to take, if let's say if I were to take one scoop of uh, brain matter, right? Take a spoon and take a scoop, and take one, the brain matter the size of one grain of sand, a grain of sand, a brain matter the size of a grain of sand. Can you imagine how many neurons are there? How many nerve cells are there in that grain of sand? In that brain matter. Maybe I'll ask the question again, okay? If you take a scoop of brain and take one tiny piece of brain, the size of a grain of sand, can you imagine how many neurons are there? Somebody says one million. Okay, so I was listening to a speaker called Joe Dispenza. He does some research on this topic and I, I like the way he compared to the grain of sand. He said, in the size, in the brain matter size of grain of sand, there are hundred thousand neurons, and since one neuron can connect to seven thousand other neurons, is you have about seven billion neural connection in one that tiny piece of brain matter. So just imagine the amount of power in your thoughts, in your belief, the way you see yourself. This has influence on every aspect of your life. It's like like I I compare this to having a software in your laptop, in a computer, right? You have a hardware. But how it works largely depends on the software you use. It, it behaves differently for different software. So you have to think about what is the software and does your software needs an upgrade? The, have you been upgrading your software? That's essential. So your software runs you 88% of time because a lot of your behavior, since brain like to save energy, it also automates a lot of behaviors. A lot of your thought process happens in certain way. The way you woke up this morning, brushed your teeth, did something, you know, picked up something, always the right hand or the left hand. A lot of things are programmed reaction because the brain, brain likes to save energy. And, but you need to be aware of that. And um, as Earl Nightingale would say, you become what you think about all day long. The, the reason for that is the brain is constantly being wired and refired. The neurons are being wired. They, some, they, they say when two neurons fire together, they wire together. They form these different connections. While the basic piece of equipment is the same, different people have different wiring because the way uh, they, the thoughts have helped them to wire it. Yeah. So my invitation for you would be to upgrade your operating system by installing empowering beliefs. While we can uh, find out the root cause where the beliefs came from, but it's equally important to replace that with empowering beliefs, right? So you, if something is limiting you, you have to figure out how to improve that. And part of that, uh, installing empowering belief is like planting a seed. You think about a better belief that helps you to, be, to grow in the direction of your dreams. Then you water it, it sprouts, it grows, it takes root, and eventually you have a new belief system. So first identify the belief system that's stopping you. And in some, some of my coaching programs, I actually sit with people to look at their limiting beliefs and you know we do it over a period of time, but at least and from an idea, ideation perspective, think about what you have to change. I'm gonna, so you saw this guy, you saw how they're envisioning their future. Second is if you want to develop a belief, 
think about a worthy goal choose a worthy goal and goals can be in different aspects of life whether it is money wealth health personal mastery entrepreneurship career relationship artistic pursuits or you can simplify this by by looking at a goals in your career business and life what's your next level and once you define that goal whatever it's for you different people have different goals what is it for you the thing to think about is redefine humility can someone tell me what is humility what do you mean by humility and i have a reason for saying this what do you think humility is of course being humble but what is that definition of humility the attitude realizing our mistakes so i i i coach some very successful ceos billionaires and on big time entrepreneurs uh, highly on on leadership and i also see a lot of leaders it's now fashionable to be humble right being humble has become a fashion as well but sometimes people try to be humble and uh, that becomes counterproductive because there is wrong definition of humility so uh, of course you have to be nice to people you have to respect people respect you of their whether i always say you should treat the janitor and the ceo the same right you have to treat people equally because you are not above anybody or not below everybody anybody but the point here is some people for them humble is trying to be small trying to be insignificant but that is not the way you are wired nature wants you to have full expression in life grow as much as you can have as much as you can that is how nature wants you to do and i can share with you some proof based on evidence you can verify nature so if you see a tree of course the tree grows only thing is is a root to define it's 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 only two purpose go south to find the soil and grow no high higher to to reach the sun so to go to the root and go to the sun right sorry go the root goes to the soil and the the branches goes to the sun and is wired like that no matter what stops it it will keep doing it whatever obstacle it faces in life that ha- that's how we have been wired uh, of course this is an amazing photo the tree goes down then actually finds a way to go back up no matter what setbacks you find a way to go back up and no matter where you where you are whatever limitations you have whatever less resources you have your ability your rather the commandment rather the advice for you it is strive to grow to your maximum potential no matter where you are now so it's not to limit your growth and be small and stay small because as you grow you also inspire others to grow grow better yeah and also once you have the desire develop a burning desire to achieve that so okay so as i said choose um, choose a worthy goal and also write down in precise details what you actually want to have some of you shared the goals with me earlier but others who have not think about that and start to feed that dream to make it a burning desire real goal it's not a wish because as i mentioned in my book the lot of people want to be the world champion in public speaking or the world champion but that's only interest they just interested in doing that they want to be one day but they don't actually really believe it a lot of people believe they can become the world champion which is amazing but even if not everybody who believes actually takes action so you have to move to the next stage you have to build the commitment commitment to take action daily action what the small steps you take that leads to extraordinary results in the long term so what i say is no belief no relief if you have the belief and commitment you you will find the relief opportunities come to you Arnold Schwarzenegger who was a world champion in bodybuilding who said there are no short shortcuts everything is reps 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 by the means of repetition doing it again and again and again so getting the making the muscle strong in this case and also try to imagine your future self has have has anyone done done this most people have not done this from my observation what i would suggest for you to do is to think about who really want to be in the future Two years from now, five years from now, ten years from now, twenty-five years from now doesn't matter. If you can aim like longer term, that's also great. So, simple questions to ask yourself is to who will you be in ten years time? Who will you be? What will you do in ten years time? What will you have in ten years time? What will you feel in ten years time? Or when I do this kind of exercise, people say, "Oh, I might die." Or oh, ten years, I don't know. 
I can tell you stories of people. I know a person who is 95 years old. He's making a 35 year old year plan because he believes he's going to live till 130. I know a 75 year old guy who expects to live till 150 because of the new new advances in biohacks that can help you to live for longer. So my point is don't make any limitations of sort. Ideally, what is that you want to be? That is what I say to define your future self. Okay. Is there any question on that? Okay. So, okay. If you have, we'll take a look at that. So uh, if you look at Usain Bolt, I told you I was going to be number one. I did just so a lot of people actually making plans and they go after it. So def, def, because our human minds are goal seeking, you need to have a goal. Imagine those days when you studied in the school or university, when the exam was near, you will study because you had a goal. So you nowadays you have nobody is doing that for you, perhaps, but you have to create that goal that will help you to make every day meaningful and help you to progress. Another thing to think about is that, of course, you, you do you, you, you are here and you become the champion. Then what you want to do? Think about what is that you want to do? This is actually from the book. So one thing I suggest people and people, people say, I ask this question. Why do you want to be the world champion? Especially those people asking about being the world champion in public speak. The question to ask is what are you going to do after you become the world champion? And think about starting to do that now. Don't wait to become the world champion. Do what you're planning to do. Yeah. Am I clear there? Yes. All right. So don't, don't have to wait for someone to give you permission that, okay, now you can do, no, you can do the same. Now you don't have to wait for that thing. Okay. Also plan your trip. So if you are, if you are taking a journey to somewhere, what you do, you plan your trip, you plan the route, what you want to do, what, what help do you need? What, what is the map and get to work? That's exactly what you should do. Muhammad Ali has a great quote. He said, I do not count my sit-ups. I only start counting when it starts hurting because they are the only ones that count. And that's what makes me a champion. So you have to get to work because once you have set that goal, most people don't. And next is to say no to temptation while you are going for a journey. Why are, why are you aiming for something very easy to give up? Even when I go to the gym, let's say I decide to exercise uh, in a, what we call elliptical training, let's say for 30 minutes, I have observed that there are so many times I want to quit. Maybe at the first minute or the fifth minute or the seventh minute. And we all have temptation to quit and take the easier route. That's why I earlier said you have to make that desire a burning desire so you can keep going and also to say no to temptation. Temptation is always there. And um, Jim Rohn has a nice line where he says, if you really want to do something, you will find a way. If you don't, you will find an excuse. So you have to do something. And uh, I always say uh, your temptation chase you like Usain Bolt, right? Usain Bolt has a line, no matter how far you get ahead of me, I'm going to catch you. That's my mentality. That's exactly what temptations do. You, you want, you're about to do something. Suddenly you, you're tempted to do something else. You, so you have to watch for that and make corrections. Does that make sense? Your temptation will never leave you. You have to watch out and make plans ahead of time. And that's what will make you a champion. Okay. So, and also choose your mentors wisely. I always say having mentors is essential. Mentors are like kingmakers. I mentioned that is my book, Mastering Leadership, The Mouse Way. Mentors are like kingmakers, one of the kingmakers, but the key kingmaker, because every king is surrounded by kingmakers. But you have to choose your mentors wisely. Your mentor should really help you to be better, but not make you a version of themselves. So their objective is to make, not make you like them. You, they should allow you to surpass them, to be better than them. They will cheer you on. So this is why I say you have to be, choose your mentors wisely. So I am always happy when one of my students are there. A lot of my students are doing way better than me. Okay. To be honest, completely honest. Right. And, I, and, I, and they are inspiration for me. I take advice from them. So my point here is, and a lot of my mentors are like that. They really, really help me to be better than them. They don't hold anything back. And I'm trying to be the same mentor. My mentors have to be, 
have been to me, right? So the objective is not to make them become them. And I also say stop being a cage lion. When I say a cage lion, when a lion is put in the cage and being constantly fed, it will become fat and fat. Um, but it and is fed, it is not hungry, but it's still within the cage. It is not does not unleash its true potential. So stop being a cage lion and who has forgotten how to hunt. Okay. You have to learn to hunt, you have to hunt for yourself. And also becoming world class. So you don't what I say is you don't have to be world renowned to become world class. You don't have to be world renowned to become world class. World being world class is a choice. Yeah. So you start doing stuff like a world class person that will help you. So I in fact say about the mind ascension, ascension pyramid. Uh, so there are ordinary minds, extraordinary minds and you know, world class um, thinking or rather ordinary thinking, extraordinary thinking and world class thinking. So I'll just focus on the world class thinking. A world class thinking is when you are abundant, you are willing to cooperate, you're willing to race to the top with others, not just you. You're also willing to bring other people up. You're resilient. You are not playing not to lose or playing to win. You're playing to improve. You're constantly improving and you're an achiever. And the discussions you have is not about gossiping or talking bad about other people, talking about current event of politics. You're talking about ideas, the big ideas. Uh, of the people who have similar ideas. Yeah. So you don't have to be world renowned to be world class. Uh, Jim Rohn has a line which says, You are the average of five people you spend the most time with. And here is where I thought I will share with you some resources. This is something I uh, participated recently. These are free resources. There are 50 plus free resources I can share with you if you're interested. If anybody's interested, let me know. I'll paste the link in the chat. There was. Um, group of experts who were sharing free resources. I also joined. There's also a free public speaking course for me if you're interested, but there are also other people's content. Okay. I move on. And also being world-class also being a perpetual work in progress. And this is what I like about some of the leaders I coach. Some of, as I said, some of the leaders I'm coaching are very, really high profile. They're running multi-billion dollar companies, huge teams. They know a lot of the other CEOs. They're highly well networked. But, we, and I do give them very direct feedback and, uh, and they they hire me to give them feedback. Okay. But what I like about them, the moment I give them feedback, they say something along the line, Manoj, I'm such a, I'm a work in progress. And I, I'm really, it's not that they don't feel offended. Sometimes I send, I, I write a two page document of all the feedbacks I have for them and I send it to them. Now I'm a bit, bit worried. What will they say about, will they get, no, will they get angry? Will do they want stop working with me? But typically they say, Oh, thank you so much for the feedback. I have so much to improve. I'll really work on this now because they all know they need feedback. They need to get better. And the, the it's, a, it's actually a perpetual improvement. You all keep on improving every day of their life. And because you all probably heard this, they say, Feedback is the breakfast of champions to have the willingness to take feedback. I also had opportunity to share my stages with um, very accomplished speakers. This guy on the right, uh, some of you might recognize him. I spoke alongside him uh, at a stage. After that, we are meeting in the green room and he was sharing his years he he on a wheelchair and it was about 76 years or so. I was still making plans for what to do next. Uh, making big goals. By the way, the guy's name is Brian Tracy. You probably recognize him. He's an American speaker and author. And uh, this guy on the right, do you know him? He is the guy who invented the mind map. It's also a very global brand, mind maps. His name is Tony Buzan. And incidentally, he was also a Toastmaster during the last years of his life. And um, Again, the top of, and he was a poor student in class, but he made a vision and he worked on it and went ahead. Yeah. Uh, the guy on the right actually is my mentor. One of my mentors, his name is Dr. Thiagi. He's my mentor and, or rather role model as well in the, uh, in the area of interactive learning. He's interactive. Like she's really, really strong, uh, intelligent guy. I think about 80 plus, you will have, always see him reading a book, learning, making plans. So the point here is it's per and this guy on the, my left, he's the number one leadership thinker in the world, Marshall Goldsmith. He coaches top CEOs in the world. 
um, and uh, as you can, can understand, even top CEOs need coaches and mentors, right? So my, my point is, I when I look at them, they never stop learning. They're always learning, always reading, always sharing, always growing their tribe. So the point is, is this is your when you're trying to be world class or develop a world champion mindset, you're not stopping. You're always on to something. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you're, it's not like an end goal. You're always trying to improve, but in massive ways. You know, you always that, that you develop that mindset that's so much more to do. Even the top people in the world do not use more than 10% of their brain. Okay, so we have infinite potential. How much more we use, uh, we can utilize is left to our own effort and interest. Yeah. So next question to ask is, who are you becoming? Who are you becoming by pursuing this goal of developing a world champion mindset? The most important thing is not the question of who, what you're going to get. So Jim Rohn has a line, we said, what you become is far more important than what you get. So even if, so what you get will influence what you become. For example, he says, of course, he's a speaker from the 1960s and very famous speaker, mentor for a lot of, he's a philosopher, a business philosopher. One of the things he says is, you know, um, you should all be millionaires. You should all be millionaires. But it's not for the money. Is what you become in the process. So you have have to have big goals, and the reason for that not just achieve it. What you become in the process. You're going from another, from what you used to be to a better version of yourself. That I can tell you is very powerful. Of course, um, you can also become a role model for other people because you can inspire others to be a better version of themselves. You can help them shorten their curves, and this whole thing is about developing an abundant mindset than developing gratitude and staying humble. All that's a, that naturally happen. Usually I've, I've seen truly successful people are naturally humble. Why? Because they know, I, I believe the reason why is because they know anyone can rep replicate their success. They're very humble. Um, I'm fortunate enough to meet a lot of people who are truly successful, work their way up their career ladders and entrepreneurial ladders. And uh, so becoming the role more, and they also say, I ask them, what is the 10 year goal or 15 year goals? They're always about giving back. Even in the Middle East, I have some of my clients I meet who are uh, like billionaires. And I ask them, so what is your goal? And eventually the objective is to give back to society, help them, help other people. So the mindset has become different because a lot of people look up to them. And people also will look up to you when you decide to become a best version of yourself. So I say when you do more, you serve more and you also deserve more. So you, your rewards will also be in direct propor proportion to your contribution, right? Think about that. So as I said, I also still continue to speak. I also in the meantime do coaching. One of my top coaching program or popular coaching program is a next level leadership readiness program where I help people to get to the next level in the career, business and life. And sometimes also about rewiring your mindset. It's not that they don't have the potential or talent. Is that the why the, we have to think in new ways when you get to the next level. So I always say your next level role needs a next level you. It's easy to get to the next level, but also need to upgrade your mindset. Does that make sense? So what worked for you as a junior employee or a junior staff is not going to work for you when you are at a higher level. Marshall Goldsmith has a line that says, what got you here won't get you there. So you are wherever you are in life because of the strategies you adopted, the techniques you deployed, the things you learned. But if you want to go to another level, you need new strategies, new tactics, new techniques. So you also always have to think about the next level. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so every level needs a new strategy, new action. Yeah. As I said, uh, uh, leap is what I say you now to break through that barriers to get to the next level in your career. So I always feel honored that a lot of people from different backgrounds, I can, I can help them because of what I have learned and what I have become and what I have, I'm willing to share. I also attract people who are willing to learn. A lot of people fly to where I live to learn from me. And I also say that this is something I could do only because I was willing to grow. This was uh, in Europe. This lady was someone I invited to, you know, she was afraid of public speaking. 
So I invited her to come to the front. She was shaking. And so I had pretty much dragged her to stay there. And then I did a live coaching for her. And then she delivered a speech and she got a standing ovation. Right. And she also, she recorded a testimonial of sorts saying, sharing her experience. One thing she said is that when you invited me to speak, I freaked out. And after I spoke, the audience freaked out. Right. So the point is sometimes you are withholding what you have because of your limitation, because of your fear, lack of confidence or lack of um, involvement or willingness to share what you have. That might be limiting your true potential. And you, so some people say, um, if you do not share what you know and uh, teach others and um, show your work, you could become the world's best kept secret. That means your talent potential will never be uncovered just because you decided not to share. So the world needs more people like you, nice people who are willing to grow and share and um, contribute positively to the world. There was, uh, you can check this out on BBC. I was asked this question after I became the world champion of public speaking, why you decided to be the world champion of public speaking. Uh, my point was not about becoming the world champion of public speaking. I always say there are five core skills you need to master. You, and, and until you master these five core skills, it doesn't matter what you master, you will always be performing under your true potential. So what are the five core skills? I'll quickly share with you. Is one is an ability to connect. When you connect, how can you connect with the people you meet? And how do you communicate? How do you express your thoughts clearly, confidently and convincingly? How do you network? How do you build relationships so that you get the right help when you need it the most? How do you lead? How do you uh, delegate your work? How do you get things done through other people? Uh, how do you convey a vision? So all, all about leadership. Leadership is a force multiplier. You can get more things done than you could ever imagine by becoming a better leader. And also the ability to influence. So ability to connect, communicate, network, lead and influence. And once you have that, what you essentially are having is you upgrade your confidence level. So when you do more, you serve more and you deserve more. So it's actually a belief system. I already shared with your resource and that is actually a pooled resource. Remember I showed you this picture, Roger Federer, it's from Switzerland, I figured out. And he is one of the top tennis stars. And the guy we mentioned was Novak Djokovic. The one of the challenges he faced, Novak, is that Roger Federer is very popular. People like him. And when he plays against Roger Federer, the audience is cheering for Roger, 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 right? And um, one thing he shared in an interview, which I thought was very powerful, he said, when the crowd is chanting Roger, I hear Novak. He kind of mm, changed the belief system to believe that they are, they are rooting for him. So he doesn't get distracted by people who is not supporting him or is over against him. And that is essentially part of that mindset we are talking about. And that essential mindset, your mindset is the gear that turns the wheel that helps you achieve what you set out to achieve. So my invite for you is to think about what is that you truly want to achieve in your life, in your career, in your business, in your life, where have you been playing small? And by playing small, you're not helping anybody. You're not helping you. You're not helping your family. You're not helping society. You're not helping um, complete your God-given mission of full expression and full growth to as much as you can, given the, your naturally natural gifts and talents and opportunities that are all over you. Because once you seize those opportunities, once you utilize those talents, you will become a person so much better than who you are now that people will look up to you as a role model. And I wish and pray that's what you will look forward to do. And here are some resources. Again, I'll quickly go through that. Some resources I will recommend and before I close. Uh, one is uh, the link I shared with you earlier. Uh, this is like a pool group of resources I was also part of. There's also a free foundation course in public speaking from me. Um, and um, uh, also a lot of other resources as well. So some book, rec do you like some book recommendations? Anybody I can. Okay. Since most of you are involved in public speaking, I would highly recommend 
that you read this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's about talking about talking from the other person's perspective. Like, so this is essential. All the good salespeople, all the good leaders know they probably have read this. Yeah. Also, all the good speakers would have read this. Uh, Carol Dweck, um, professor from Stanford, has a concept called mind, growth mindset. You probably heard. If not, it's a good book to consider. She talks about growth minds and fixed minds and how growth minds can help you uh, rewire your brain, get better. Uh, Sindhu has a book, has a, a phenomenal book because it uh, shares with you stories about it's called infinite possibilities unlock your real potential with the secret recipes of super achievers yeah, i'll highly recommend i read this book and i also found those individual stories basically these are stories of ordinary people who have become world class and world renowned just because they change the way they think about situation of course this is my book mastering leadership the mousetrap way I'm available at themousetrapway.com. And uh, the other book I said was uh, the um, WCPS book. This is if you're interested in becoming a better speaker. They originally written for contestants, but it also been used by people. You can just look at it, whether it makes sense for you. No pressure at all, right? But if you need, you read. So with that, I highly recommend that you really watch your BS, your belief system, upgrade your operating system thing like a um, you know choose a worthy goal and also having a worthy goal doesn't mean you're arrogant is you had to redefine humility because your natural command or the, your natural wiring is to have full expression you never see a tree that could grow for to 100 meters stop growing at 10 meters and said so 10 meters is too much Right, it has been programmed to grow for 100 meters, so it'll never give up halfway. So, you if you have been limiting yourself, that's because you're misusing your ability to think. So, you have to. I'm not saying you're misusing, but you just you just at least be aware, or, or I should not use a negative word, I should use a positive. You should maximize your ability to think to grow the maximum you can, and also to redefine um, uh, what, uh, what you really want in life, and also to develop a burning desire for what you can. And also, as I said, as a, at least as a homework uh, or as an exercise, think about your futures. What do you truly want? Because brain is a goal-seeking engine. So you need to have a well-defined goal. And then get to work, say no to temptations, and also choose mentors. Mentors are there. Mentors are not paid because they're priceless, okay? Then it's not, mentors are not paid not because they're worthless, because they're priceless. Of course, you can also get paid mentorship, professional coaching, whatever that works for you, because time is the most valuable thing you will spend. Okay. So uh, don't, um, uh, don't worry about investing in yourself. The best people always invest in themselves. And again, uh, to be world-class, you don't have to be world renowned. And also, as I showed several examples, you're always, it will be a work, perpetual work in progress. You have to keep on improving, having new goals all the time, no matter uh, how old you get. And also, it's not about um, what you get, it's also who you will become. And once you implement this, I truly believe that you will not only contribute your growth, your family, your society, but also you will, people can look up to you as a role model and benefit from it. All right, with that, I'll give the control back to Guru. That was indeed a profusely enlightening keynote, painted to us with an artist's passion and dedication. Very informative, very invoking of ideas coming from a person like you who has been through toils and the slogging, having the mindset to do the best in what you can do in whatever you want to do. The hundred minds who are listening today, I'm confident that uh, all our mindsets are changed. Thank you once again for helping us in our quest to educate, innovate, and help us sail beyond the sunset. Thank you very much for that. And uh, what can I say? It's a great honor. It's, it's a great honor to be uh, felicitating or uh, providing a, uh, a summary thanks uh, to the great world champion of public speaking. I would say once again, okay, I don't know uh, whether he does remember it or not. Uh, I was, I had this honor sometime last year when he was speaking and uh, I'm so lucky that uh, I got this uh, chance to speak about uh, take uh, after have after having taken lots and lots of notes f 
from what you have uh, just spoken to us and i have this wonderful opportunity to uh, talk about what you did speak with us uh, it is so wonderful and if i have to say uh, if i have to explain it in one word because time is short for me is uh, it was so inspirational extremely inspirational having come from a person who has all along all through his life you have you have been a person from what i mean i have we have read about you before and from what we have all heard from you in the last one hour or so i mean a person who has stayed completely inspired all through your life all through your career even before becoming a world champion uh, you know i think uh, uh, i think learning and sharing has been a passion from what what you just shared with us i think i'm seeing with various pictures various with a lot of people and i think in whichever environment that you have been uh, i could only make a, a picture speaks a lot and it's it's so it shows me only one thing that you have always been enjoying learning as well as sharing with with the people who have always been surrounded with you and uh, great great concepts that you have shared with us you definitely brought about as the master of ceremony just said i think you definitely made that little twist in our mindset in a positive way i think when you start to talk about i think mindset is so powerful i mean uh, i think i've heard from you and some other speakers you know it's very important if you are going to be uh, if you are going to be committed to your goals and to reach where you have to reach i think you need to have a, a bulletproof mindset and a battleproof heart set and we stay committed and once again i am quoting from your uh, inspirational words you know if you want world class results you need to commit yourself to world class efforts like what nokovic djokovic did or what uh, roger federer did all the other wonderful players great examples and you know uh, i mean it's, it is you know we all listen to, to many speeches and keynotes but some keynotes and some speeches always stand out and what makes them stand out is not what that is delivered it is how you deliver what you deliver you know you are you are i think you are you were inside our homes as you were delivering i mean it's not a surprise and you know, it's not a surprise i would have been surprised if it had not been that way i mean you are a world champion you are you are a you are a world world level speaker and uh, all the audience members today i am very very sure every one of us stood benefited and uh, what can i say the, the the free resources thank you for those freebies i can, i was one of the i think i am one among the others who kept downloading those freebies and i think i you 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 have um stuffed us with enough substance for the next few months i guess and probably go on and on wonderful and um, uh, carol dweck uh, with the, uh, the one of the books that i have personally read um mr satya nadal of microsoft was inspired by carol dweck and i think you shared the book and so many other wonderful resources and i was so inspired all through i'm not just saying this to uh, just make you think i'm just speaking from my heart and uh, we Thank all I mean, our paths in our lives uh, that we cross are marked by milestones but it's not those milestones uh, that make us what we are it's what we become that make us what we are it is again i i i got this inspiration when you were speaking and you were sharing like it's not what it's not very important uh, what uh, it's what is more important in our life is what we become than what we get amazing thank you so much for sparing your very valuable time and uh, making our time our time more valuable to ourselves thanks thanks for having me thank you good see you.